On the first, uh, and these slides, we're going to focus on the quality control portion of the high voltage cable life. Basically, uh, quality control for uh, cable producers and laboratories has uh, two roles. The first role is to research and development, R&D, because we need uh, to characterize the material or the products we are doing. If we, if we create a new product, of, of course, we want to make sure that this product is uh, free of partial discharge and has uh, very good uh, insulation property that those are not affected by thermal or, uh, or uh, other uh, factors those can affect PD testing. Additionally, we also use a partial discharge to validate the prototypes we are making. So we know if we are taking the correct uh, direction or not. The second role that is a more the quality role is the factory acceptance test and the type test certification. So if I'm producing uh, high voltage uh, cables, I have to test all of them and all of them uh, shall have a very low partial discharge level and shall be done in a route as a routine test. So every time I'm repeating the same, the same uh, actions and the same procedure. For R&D, it's important to have uh, all the possible data to be studied because I want to analyze all the possible uh, uh, characteristics of the prototypes I'm doing or, or the material I'm studying. So I want to have a lot of information and uh, tunable parameters. I want to change uh, the, the triggers, I want to change the time of the test, I want to change the timeline time saving, I want to see the waveform and saving, and so on. So, in this case, I need something much, much more uh, tunable and much, much more, let's say, powerful of what I may need if I'm doing a routine test. On the other side, operation needs a fast standard test and that shall be easy to perform. I cannot give uh, too much time to this kind of testing. It's a routine test. It must be a yes or no test. I don't, at least at, at the, if it is a yes, I don't need all the information. If it is no, maybe I can study the reason why the routine test has failed, but I need something easy and fast. So we need a very basic function, very, basics, very basic uh, functionality and procedure for the instrument. We have, in the PD base, one object with uh, two duties. So we need R&D people that want uh, um, much, uh, much deeper knowledge of what is occurring and they want to adjust different parameters and so on. So there is an operator mode for such utilization where a skilled operator can, suit, can uh, tune whatever they want, uh, can uh, select whatever they want and they can and they'll, uh, amount of the information available is huge. On the other side, we need the operation to have fast standard test. No parameter set, no tuning, everything very fast. So the combination of these two comes with the PD base and the PD Pro. The PD Pro is uh, the software that basically collects all different software for partial discharge and has different uh, operation modes. So in operator mode, R&D people will have uh, the full control of all the units. Instead, in uh, test plan mode, I can just prepare some test plan and uh, repeat them on different uh, assets of the same type, applying the same rules and saving the data in the database. One instrument, two solution. Uh, when speaking about quality control in the laboratories, we also need to follow all the single steps of the ESC 60270 and related uh, other ESC standards, where we have a definition of the acquisition bandwidth, of the measuring circuit, of the sensor, and of the test method. So we will need a coupling capacitor, we will need a coupling device, CA coupling capacitor, CD coupling device, and measuring instrument coupling capacitor, PQ, PD base 2. Additionally, the PD calibrator. With uh, this full set, we can perform all the standard ESC 60270 tests to our asset. Second part of the life of the cable, 
the both high voltage cable and high voltage accessories have successfully passed all the quality of the factory so they are shipped on site and the cable is pulled into the cable trays or into the tunnel and the different sections of the cables are jointed together with accessories at the two ends of the cables we have an outdoor termination, a transformer termination, or a JS termination. So there is already a um, new series of possible sources of defect. Since uh, it's uh, almost a craftsman job to prepare joints uh, and to make termination, sometimes it can happen that uh, due to uh, some mistakes, it is possible to induce partial discharge phenomena in such accessories. Let's see what we can do. Normally, mm, the most followed standards for uh, high voltage cable site testing are the EAC 60840 and the 62067. After laying the cable, we have to perform some tests to prove that the insulation is okay. Offline test is a 60 minutes voltage injection where we inject from 1 to 1.1 up to 1.7 the rated voltage of the cable. Another solution is the soak test. So we keep the uh, cable on 24 hours in normal voltage condition by connecting the cable to the grid. It's a fast, not fast test. Nowadays, it became, it's becoming popular to perform PT test on site uh, as part of the commissioning. So or we, since we have uh, uh, an AC test, we can include in this AC test a PD survey as well. We have different test procedures, uh, and uh, such uh, different test procedure can be, let's say, matching the cables uh, layout and the customer requirements. During, uh, let's say, let's make a first comparison between offline test of one hour at uh, different voltage, so more than rated voltage, with uh, versus the 24-hour SOC test. Potential problem on the grid in case of failure. That is a risk we are running with the SOC test, but uh, when we are performing the offline test, we are connecting the cable to a RTS resonant testing unit voltage generator, so we are not connected to the grid. We are not affecting uh, any anything from the grid side. We can have, uh, from the PD point of view, some uh, noise, uh, induced by the grid. That's the case of the SOC test. Instead, in the offline one test, we don't have such problem, mostly because we normally work outside of 50 Hz or 60 Hz. We are using the resonance frequency, so eventual PD phenomena will be referred to the resonance frequency, not to 50 or 60 Hz. Induced noise from adjacent phases, that's the case of the SOC test, where we have basically the cable connected to the wall substation at the same frequency. We can pick up uh, external surfaces coming from the termination, coming from the transformer, from, from connection, and we have to discriminate if such PD signals are from our cables, are from the cable we are testing, or they are coming from the substation itself. Another point that is very important for the customer is uh, how many companies and crews are involved. Basically, how many people do I have to manage? In the SOC test, it's very easy because you don't need no one except the utility people and the testing people. Instead of the offline test, there are several groups to manage. You need to manage the resonant testing unit, the personnel for the resonant testing unit, the personnel for the connection between the external power supply and the cable, the PD testing team. So many more, much more, much more people involved in such kind of testing. The test voltage level and the voltage tuning is very bad for the SOC and very good for the offline test because in the SOC we don't have any control on the voltage we're injecting the cable. We can just inject the rated voltage. In the offline test, it is possible to variate the inset the voltage of the the injected voltage in the cable, and it's also possible to evaluate some uh, classical uh, PD parameters like the partial discharge inception voltage and partial discharge extinction voltage. From the cost point of view, obviously the offline test is a much more costly test. 
the best solution uh, as a testing engineer point of view is the offline test. Why? Because I have a higher stress of the insulation over the rated voltage and I can acti activate uh, also small defect. Those are not visible during the, doing a SOC test. The sensitivity of offline test is also higher thanks to the absence of the grid noise and the other phase noises. And uh, in general, it's a uh, it's a very appreciated uh, test for, for big cable networks. During the SOC test, so the PD measurement monitoring is done during the 24 hours. We have a flat applied voltage during 24 hours. We don't have over voltage. We don't have any voltage tuning. We can have a small PD not yet accepted because of the low electrical stress. Mind you that uh, PD are induced by the voltage. So if I'm increasing the voltage, I'm increasing the chances to, to see small defects. Noise and disturbances from the network can be a problem with soft testing. All three phases are tested together. So in some cases can be a problem to understand uh, from which uh, phase I have the signal and from which phase I have the crosstalk. Uh, it, some, skills, some skills may be required for the diagnostics. In the So this is a presentation of the offline testing. Uh, to energize a uh, voltage cable, we need the uh, external resonance testing system. Those are these four units you can see here on the bottom of the picture. Each unit shall be energized with a low voltage generator. There are not so many of these units in the world, so it's not easy to have them available on site. Depending on the circuit length and voltage, it is possible to require more than one unit. In this case, we had four units, for example. We need a RTS operator scaled, especially if we need to connect more than one unit. And what happens normally is that uh, we perform a three different PD measurement at three different voltage steps with uh, a resonant testing system. One test at 0 0.8 uh, phase to ground rated voltage, one at rated voltage, and finally the one at the most stressed voltage we reach, that is normally 1.7 times the phase to ground voltage. In this case, we can evaluate at which voltage the uh, partial discharge is incepted and at which voltage the partial discharge is extinct. Then during the commissioning, we also have another. Uh, Another choice to make, do we want to perform a simultaneous test or a sequential test? We can uh, have, uh, let's say, both solutions, but there are some numbers constrained. With simultaneous PD testing, we have all the detection points checked together. In the sequential, we check the detection point one by one, moving along the circuit. Of course, simultaneous uh, is a better solution in terms of quality, time, and flexibility. But uh, you need uh, many operators, you need many acquisition units, or you need an infrastructure to have all the signals available. So in, uh, in uh, normally, the sequential is the cheapest way to test uh, the cable. Let's see now a small comparison between sequential and simultaneous testing. Homogeneous stress on all the HV accessories, it's something that we have on the simultaneous, but we don't have at, at the sequential, because uh, suppose that we test uh, during the one hour AC applied voltage the, uh, with a sequential technique. We move uh, joint to joint in a high voltage cable, and the first cable has uh, received just a few minutes of uh, voltage injection, while the last one has a one hour full of high voltage test. We, we also lose uh, the chances uh, with the sequential test to identify some extraordinary signals. For, for instance, if I have uh, if I see a small PD in a joint, I would like to have also the reading from the previous and the next joint to be sure that the PD source is the one I'm testing and is not a crosstalk from the nearby accessory. It's something that I don't have with the sequential testing. The test preparation cost and effort is much, much higher for the simultaneous test because we have uh, many more things to prepare, many more to manage and many more crew to manage. 
the test engineer cost may be higher for the sequential test respect to the simultaneous test because if I everything set in place before my testing engineer arrives, the simultaneous PD test can be very, very short. The involvement of the customer in the project on the process is higher in the sequential because uh, again, if I'm preparing everything good uh, during the simultaneous test, basically in one hour I will have finished all my activities and I don't need any support from the other parts. Instead, on the sequential, I need to move. Maybe I need to ask the RTS operator to run 10 more minutes of test because I was not able to test all the accessories, and so on. The effort from the external contractors in the sequential is quite low, and the simultaneous is quite high because we need to set everything in place we need to test. One thing that is also quite bad and we have to consider, especially in long cables when we are testing all the high voltage joints, are the traffic control. If I'm doing a sequential test, every time I'm moving from one joint to another, I need a traffic control crew to stop the traffic, open the manual, and so on. Instead, with the simultaneous, I will have a session of preparation of all the boxes, but after that, uh, I don't have any more issues with the traffic. As a testing engineer and also as a company, we prefer the simultaneous test because even if it's, it is a bigger effort at the beginning, the overall quality and the overall flexibility of the, of the testing resources is higher with the simultaneous testing. This is an example of sequential test. Here we have uh, the voltage profile we have to keep. We can perform the, the, HV, the, the PD test after the HVAC. So in this case, the electrical stress is limited to the shot we are giving. We need several, several voltage application to perform in case of long circuit, because imagine that we have one operator covering uh, 15 joints. We need 15 voltage injection to perform the sequential PD test. We don't need any fiber optic. All the accessories uh, are tested after the HVAC, that is a good condition because they already suffered one hour of high voltage stress. In the sequential test, uh, the, the kink operator moves along the cable, measure all the accessories, and you need more shots to complete the test. It's an easy indication. First, we test the cable termination, the JL termination on one side, then we move to Join bay, then do the second join bay, and so on, till we finish all the detection point. In case of more than one operator, we can split this job into crews. The number of shop, shots is uh, equal of the number of, of accessories with one operator. If we have more than one operator, we can split this job, these uh, detection points, by the number of the operators involved. In the simultaneous PD test, the PD measurement can be done during the HVAC because everything is in place and we can uh, make the test during the one hour without losing time. We have all the hardware set and uh, when we have everything set, it is possible to test up to four or five cables per day to perform four or five of these, cables, of these voltage injection and PD test. We have the maximum electrical stress. We need fiber optic and we need PD sensor and PD apps pre installed on all the cable accessories. So the effort to install all the hardware is higher, especially for the fiber optic. But then the advantages that we have during the test is worth it. So this is the idea. We have the same circuit, we install. For each joint bay acquisition unit, a portable PD hub, temporary PD hub, sorry, and the sensor. Then everything is connected via fiber optic that is uh, sometimes embedded even in the high voltage cable itself. And uh, the number of operators required can test remotely from uh, one end of the cable, maybe next to the RTS unit, or the single joint. It is possible to jump from one detection point to another with just one click. Obviously, we need uh, a robust communication to make all that available for this test. The most effective and reliable solution is the fiber optic network. 
In some cases, we have, as I told you, we have them embedded in the cables. In some other cases, uh, external uh, external fiber optic connection will provide. Another thing that we need on site is the power supply, because we need to energize uh, the PD apps for many days in order to complete the whole job. Or if we have any problems, we need an extra time. What we need? We need a reliable, easy to find, and cheap power supply. The answer we have found were car batteries. We have developed our uh, temporary PD apps to be energized with car batteries. And with this configuration, we can install everything, connect uh, the acquisition locks to the cable batteries, close the pit, close the joint bay, and uh, we will have the communication with such uh, acquisition units for seven days. 